for someone that you would have. So um, <coughs> the story goes that um, there was a emergency room physician that um, was on his day off, but he was on call. He got called to the hospital, and he got around as quick as he could to make it to the emergency room. And this particular physician was a surgeon. Um, and when he came into the ER area, you know, he was in shorts and flip-flops and, and a shirt, and he kind of rushed right um, to the back to start scrubbing up. And um, the patient that he was to come work, work on, um, his dad was out in the waiting area, and he was disturbed by the fact that um, this physician was, you know, not not dressed properly and just kind of rushed by, didn't, you know, say I'm here, you know, to help and all of that. And, um, so he was complaining to the to the nurse at the desk, you know, that he was kind of unhappy that he felt like he was kind of pushed to the side. Well. After a you know a pretty grueling session of surgery, about five hours to um, save this um, young man that had um, been in a car accident, <clears throat> he came out of um, the surgery and uh, went by, and his assistant stopped to talk to the to the dad, and the dad again was very upset that the uh, surgeon hadn't actually, you know, consulted with him and told him what was going on. Even though the surgery went um, well, the, the, the child was, um, survived the, the incident and everything was fine. The dad, again, uh, persisted <coughs> on complaining about how he was um, not served well by this um, physician. And so, uh, uh, the, the story is that the, the physician rushed on out of the hospital and after some complaining, the, the nurse that was attending said, well, the problem was is he just lost his son in an accident two days ago. Mm -hmm. And he was with his family during this time and was, you know, didn't have the time to sit with you and visit with you. He needed to get back to his family. <clears throat> so the point of the whole story is that um, to be able to have regard or esteem for someone, you kind of need to know their backstory. Because <clears throat> sometimes their backstory can affect um, how they're performing in your view or what else is going on in their life can, um, you know, affect um, what's going on. So you need to know the whole story and not just take it at the surface level. And so that's my take on esteem or regard is know the whole story before you make a judgment on what's going on. Um, and I think the British would agree. 
And I say that because for those of you who don't know, I was raised in a primarily New Zealander household. And New Zealanders are, uh, they take great pride in identifying with their British culture and their British heritage. And the British Commonwealth as a whole is known for uh, demonstrating your persona, keeping a stiff upper lip. And that was really relevant in World War II when the British coalition was very, uh, which is very key in helping the Western allies achieve a common goal. Um, anyways, when I was a child, uh, my grandparents from New Zealand would visit very frequently. And my grandfather in particular is very supportive, especially of all my athletic events, and he would come to all of my swim events, every single one that he could. And he's there on the sidelines, he's cheering me on, and uh, just a very, very passionate uh, human being. And I remember one event in particular that was close to my heart and my pride because I wanted to qualify for state championships. And I did. The problem is that I had bad techniques. I was disqualified. <laughs> and I was in tears. I was just absolutely devastated. And I remember my grandfather coming up to me and he just came pulled me aside and he's like, Jess, you gotta keep a stiff up, stiff upper lip. <laughs> I was 10 years old. What does that mean? And how is it supposed to make me feel better? I'm just staring at him bewildered. And um, he went on to explain that keeping a stiff upper lip, it's, it's important not only because I deserve to focus on the next events that I have coming up, but because my team deserved my positive mentality and my ability to move forward. Um, and it wasn't about me or my mistakes. It was about my commitment to my team and to moving onward. It was a matter of consideration. It was a matter of respect. So this mantra of keeping a step up or lip, it's uh, stuck with me as an integral modicum uh, of respect. And it's an expression of duty to yourself and to others. And as I've developed my experience in the professional working world, as much as I've had at 24 years old, um, <laughs> The application is still the same for me as it was 14 years ago. It's the deliberate and habitual commitment to creating a positive mental space, no matter what the circumstances are. And I think that's particularly relevant at a fast-paced and high-performance environment here at DBG. As people know, everything needs to be done yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so just despite the circumstances or the context, we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our company culture, our tasks, our projects, and especially to our coworkers to really make that commitment to create a positive mental space and keep that stiff upper lip. So. Being disrespectful 
to you does not mean you have to step outside of that box and be the same way. Because you're always going to look back on that situation and say, I could have did this this way, or I could have handled the situation a different way. With me, I don't like conflict, so I just like, OK, whatever. I might have my own opinion. <laughs> That's just me. But um, I think it always goes back to that golden rule as to treat others the way that you want to be treated. And that has always stuck with me is, you know, I just can't disrespect people and not expect for people to not disrespect me. And so I just look at that and that's a golden rule, that's a value that I always carry. If I'm asked to do something, a task or whatever, and it may not even be in my job to go, okay, how do you want me to do it? And, you know, I'm just going to do whatever is asked because it's a respect. So that's my take on respect. So that's the reason and the thought pattern behind it. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Okay, so what we want to do today is go through and talk about, we want to get a, uh, again, it's interactive, need your input. What do you think, the person that's in that role, what is, what's a perfect example of that role? Right? Of the person that does that well, what does that look like? Okay? And so we want to get your ideas on that. So we're going to start with the marketing coordinator position. You know, I know I can rank so well, so I hope you can read it in the back. <laughs> Intuitive. 
self starter. Yeah. Brings us good leads. <laughs> I don't know how to word this really, but good at cold calling because not everyone is made for that. <laughs> I think that ties into what I was about to say, maybe perseverance. Yeah. Uh, Someone with good computer skills, too. Whether you're talking about, like, social, <laughs> social, social media. media savvy. Yeah, social media or whatever you want to, however you want to word that, I don't know how that. I would say the ability to be flexible and multitask. Multitask. Perfect, yeah. I'm say tenacious. Results for them. I think I can spell that either. <laughs> so there's another word there, and I don't remember what the word is, but um, the ability to be able to go and do something that's rather nebulous, or, or it's not, it's because part of what that role has to do is go find the person at AutoZone that we need to talk to about building AutoZone. Okay. Get past the gatekeeper. Investigative? <clears throat> Maybe that's what it is. Investigative. Investigative. Uh, okay. Any others? Someone who's knowledgeable in the market. <laughs> well, knowledgeable or seeks that, right? Because I don't know, would you, would you say you were knowledgeable in construction when you got here? I'm not being facetious. I didn't know anything about construction. <laughs> and, but what you're getting at now, I think, is you're telling me that she's very knowledgeable now. Yeah. In less than a year, she has gone out and learned the industry and asked questions and read and educated herself. Because when she got here, I don't know if she knew the difference between concrete and you know, between a foundation or a slab. Well, yeah, she didn't know what MVPs were. And so I was just, which there's nothing wrong with that. No, I, I think that nobody would unless they're out there and I'm like, oh, yeah, because I said it. And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, I got to break it down. Mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. She's like, oh, that makes total sense now. But, well, I'm just like today, head knocker. She's searching the internet for a head knocker. I'm like, it's not really called head knocker. <laughs> That's what we call it for in the construction, you know? It is called a wall cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's in my construction dictionary, actually. <coughs> <laughs> okay, so, so let's keep going. We got it. good? Any others? <coughs> Alright, so let's go through it again real quick. So, marketing, great, a good marketing coordinator, they're good communicator, they're driven, they're articulate, they're intuitive, self starter, brings good leads, cold calling, perseverance, compartmentalizing, social media savvy, flexible, multitask, tenacious, results driven, investigative, uh, knowledge about the market if not seeking it, willing to learn. Okay, cool. Next one is estimator. <coughs> Driven. <laughs> so coming back to what Josh started with, it's what's the definition of a good marketing coordinator? What's the definition of a good estimator? Yeah. A good negotiator. Yes. Yeah. Details oriented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So attention to details. Attention to detail. Yes. 
knowledgeable, knowledgeable about the trade. Or, or know someone who is. I think persuasive in, in negotiation kind of go hand in hand. Thanks, Carla. I like personal. Yeah. Well, persuasive could have negative connotation. Sorry, I'm yeah. Just, you know, it, there, there's, there's a good side to that and a bad side, right? Yeah. That's what many things. So, I think, so like where I like it in persuasive in this one is that when they're having a call just to even get a bid. Well, you know, we've already got the business going this week. All right, come on, do ours. You know. yeah. Or so when that's I good. need you and you're the best person for this job and. Whereas it can also be negative as well. Uh, okay. um, again, uh, good on the phone. Phone skills. Huh? Phone skills, sorry. It's fine. Okay, Patient. any others? Patient. Patient. Um, <coughs> we have no time for patience in SMA. <laughs> All right, so again, definition of a good estimator, driven, negotiator, details oriented, knowledgeable, trades, organized, systematic, can read plans, persuasive, personable, good on the phone, and patient. Okay? Good? All right, next one on the list, project coordinator. I was curious to see what people would say. <laughs> some days I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's new on a day to day basis. <laughs> Good. Okay. Any others?
include the verbal and written communication? Not in the yoga sense of the word, but. <laughs> You have to be convincing because you have to convince your subs that they can work harder than they think they can. Persuasive. Persuasive, you know. Self, uh, I'll say self reliant. Because <clears throat> they're out there by themselves doing it on their own, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got the office of whatever, but at the end of the day, they're out there. They're out there. <clears throat> the leader. Fancy word for they bring teams together. So Cohesive? No, no, different word. Collaborative? Collaborative, maybe. Kubaya? Custodial. job as a whole clean, you know, try to keep it moving in the right direction. Yeah, it's a great When I think of the word custodial too, the other thing that I think of with that is its ownership. Care, caretaker yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. When I think about the custodian at my church, he takes ownership in the ground. He's the guy that is in her, he takes care of all the grounds, but it's a big property, I don't know, 30 or 40 acres, 
And it's immaculate. It is immaculate at all times. He is. So he's the ground custodial guide. But to me, I tie. When I hear that <coughs> word, uh, I think ownership. Safety driven. Thank you. The safety officer. <laughs> Okay. I was just thinking about communication skills. I was trying to see where it's going on here. Or what would be communication skills? Persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. takes ownership, assertive, knowledgeable, detail-oriented, uh, persuasive, creative, problem-solver, productive, reliable, timely, self-reliant, ambassador, a leader, a collaborative, custodial, approachable, self, uh, safety-driven, and good communications. Like uh, we're all badass. <laughs> <laughs> being so flexible, I need to start up the yoga class. <laughs> I think they need to be knowledgeable in the trade, considering that they have to determine timelines for the project. And need to know how long it takes to do tasks, specific tasks. Or know how to get that information. Say like go-getter and problem solver. I'd like to change mine from pushy to persistent. <laughs> 